you will see that I am at our Tuttleman Library. You can see from what's behind me here. So this is our second live stream of today. You can see what's around me. It is kind of quiet in this room, but you'll see as we walk through the library that there's a lot more activity going on. So I'm gonna switch the camera here so you can see what's going on. So I will be walking through the halls here and we are now going into uh, the reading room, which many of you have been in before for classes uh, with different instructors of ours, especially Dr. Sandberg, who will be returning soon. Um, so we're heading into a room that many people have seen but have never actually been inside. And that is the room where we house the Holocaust Oral History Archive at Gratz College. This is an impressive place. It doesn't look like what you might expect, but it is, there are really a lot of things going on in this room. So here we're going inside, and I'd like to introduce you to some of the folks here in this room. So we'll first be meeting Josie Fisher, the director of the Holocaust Oral History Archive at Gratz. Josie, it's so good to see you. Good to see you. And I'd, I'd like to know, can you tell us a little bit about what goes on in this room? What Most people have never seen the inside of it. Tell me about what you're doing here, and tell me a little bit about the history of the archive and your role in, its, um, in that history. Thanks, Lori. Um, we started the archive in 1979. Um, we were still in the old building over on Table Road, and we were working out of boxes because we didn't have our own place. Our goal was to interview the Holocaust survivors that were willing to be interviewed in the Philadelphia area. Nora Levin, a very incredible history professor here at Gratz, uh, started it. I was her assistant and that never stopped. We are still here and this room, and maybe you can see over here, many files with Norma's work today. So you're saying that these, these boxes over here, these green boxes that we're looking at, all the audio cassettes? They have all the audio cassettes. And uh, the transcriptions, which look basically like this, and then they're very carefully audited, and Norma will tell you more about that in a bit, um, are then filed in these drawers. And on top are boxes with material that been to us, donated to us. Sometimes we know who donated it. Sometimes it's just left here. That wasn't part of our initial goal. But we have over 900 interviews, which are very, very precious. Not over 900? Yes. And that, and how, when did that start? What was that process it like? It started in 1979, and uh, Nora and I uh, brought together an incredible staff of people, many of whom were actually survivors themselves. So we had the gift of very dedicated talking about their experience. And because the thing is that our interviews were the first interview for most of these people. Some of them would go on to be interviewed by other groups, but the idea that this was the first interview gave us a kind of freshness um, and a, um, an honesty about the experience where the, their presentation was not sculpted as much as it became, they became experienced speakers. So the awkwardness of some of our interviews is also a blessing. <laughs> what else would you like to know? Um, well, I think I would like to see, just to talk to some more folks here to get Please some of do. their experiences also. So Please who, um, so of everyone here, um, who can I talk to about uh, possibly hearing about what it was like to interview a survivor? Well, I would like to, you to interview uh, and have a chance to meet. Jerry Schneeber, who was absolutely one of our first volunteers and was involved in some of the earliest interviewing. Great, okay. So Jerry, can you tell me about what it was like to interview survivors? Well, we usually interviewed them uh, in their homes or here in the, uh, in the archive. Uh, one unusual 
uh, instance for me was when we interviewed people who had come to Philadelphia uh, for a reunion. Uh, these were survivors who had been in Shanghai and uh, they came for what they called the rickshaw reunion. Hmm. So we met with them in their hotel where they were staying in uh, Center City, Philadelphia. And uh, the only space available was in their bedrooms. So usually the, there was one chair and the survivor would be seated comfortably in the chair. And the interviewer, myself, would end up sitting on the bed. Yeah. But we got the information, which was the important thing. We had a set of questions that we posed, but often it went beyond that with people volunteering information, some of it surprising. So you never knew where it was going to take you. Exactly. Yes, that must have been very fulfilling, very satisfying. Did, did you ever have trouble getting the survivors to tell their stories? Were they reluctant in any way? They were sometimes reluctant to discuss certain things, uh, like a man who uh, was being interviewed with his wife, and he talked about uh, how afterwards, when they were refugees, uh, and he was traveling alone on a, on a ship. Um, he was interviewed twice. In that interview, he didn't mention any women on that journey. But in his other interview, when he was by himself, he said that there were women who were actually prostitutes who had traveled on that ship with these men. Oh. He didn't mention any involvement uh, of his own, but it, it cast a different light <laughs> on, <laughs> on who these refugees uh, were. <laughs> and he didn't want his wife to know about that, I that's guess. Right. <laughs> well, that's an interesting story. I would not have expected to hear that one. <laughs> it was a surprise to me, too. <laughs> <laughs> that. So I, I wanted to turn now and just kind of ask about what it's like, what has it been like for all of the volunteers here in the room, for what it's been like to be part of this group? So if anyone would like to respond, you know, please name and let us know how long you've been working as a volunteer at the archive. So, right? Hi, I'm Violet Zeitler and I've been volunteering for close to 25 years. And I think the most amazing Part of it was meeting and working with all of the survivor uh, volunteers that we had who came from very diverse uh, experiences and learning from them and um, as well as uh, editing a, a, a book of um, which we have over here oh, sure let's see it called War Uncovered, Witnesses to the Liberation of Prisoners of War. One of our volunteers was Philip G. Solomon, who was himself a liberator, unexpected liberator. And he interviewed many GIs who had that experience, as well as extensive um, collection of their testimonies, which I think is very unique. Hmm. Thank you. Part of this program, what it's meant for you? I would. Uh, I'm Norma Bolden. Um, I, I think the, the specialness for me is, are the people that are sitting around the table. Um, and um, I live over an hour away, and I come in on Tuesday. So that's some, I really want to be with these people and do this work. Um, so it, it's been extremely gratifying to me. How many years have you been doing this? Oh, 16. So for 16 years, you've been driving that distance. I have. That's okay. right. <laughs> I get a lot of points for that. Too. You do. <laughs> you do. Yeah, but it... yeah. um, What I'm doing now is, is auditing um, the transcript. So what auditing is, is after the tapes are made um, and there's a transcript of the tapes, we go over the transcripts to make sure that the tape and the transcript match as closely as possible, that all the language is the same, the words are the same. Um, 
and since many of the um, interviewees ha have accents, it's it's rather challenging to try to make sure that the words match uh, on the page match the words on the tape. So that's that's what I've been doing for the last uh, few months. It sounds like it's a little bit tedious work because it, there's a lot to it that. Is, but the stories are not tedious. No. So. The no. stories are very special and, and unique. Absolutely, the stories are very special. Is this is this the recording equipment this over the, here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, so we're looking at the tape recorder. And we don't see these very often anymore. <laughs> I, there are probably people out there on eBay who would like to buy these uh, to try to find the cassette like player. Anyone out there is listening and would like to donate any tape recorders to us, we could always use some new ones. They are wonderful. It's important to realize that um, as difficult, understandably, as these stories are, the experience that the interviewers have had with the interviewing process, the very intimate situation where they're just two people talking, um, also reveals more about the experience of these survivors. There was a gentleman that I had the honor of interviewing, whose name was Meyer Adler, who was a survivor from Poland, who was very poor as a kid, um, and along with the other kids, did not have any kind of money in the family for toys. And he would go to the butcher and get a cow's um, stomach, and create a ball, which I think ends up being a rather common way of creating balls in a more sophisticated way. Um, but the other thing he would do is he would find pieces of wood and he made groggers as a young kid. And when I was interviewing him, he told me that he had continued to make the groggers and in his garage, which he later showed me, and they were being sold at the Jewish Museum in town. Wow. And I told him that I really wanted to buy a couple of groggers for my kids. And he said, absolutely. And we went out for me to pick them out. And he said, please know these come with a lifetime guarantee. My lifetime. And this is a man who had suffered tremendously, um, but he still had a spark, he still had humor, and he was very much living his life to the fullest. So that's the precious part of us being able to immerse in these stories. And you hear these stories from people, uh, from these tapes every day. You get to listen to these stories. I mean, yes. this is, it is as much, uh, it, you're doing this as a love to do it and because it needs to be done, but also, I mean, it must be very heartwarming and sometimes to hear these stories and to know that you're doing justice to these stories and these stories should not be forgotten. So it is a, a, a passion, mm -hmm. you know, an unfortunate passion, but it's there and, and we do it and we do it so that we can remember. Um, and what else can we share today? Who else would? We have another special okay. Um, okay, let's talk about this and just give me a moment while I come over here and we'll do that. Hello. Okay, can you tell me? I'm Nancy Messinger and I work a lot with my colleague uh, Ann Krupnik because we deal more with the physical materials that have been donated. Uh, almost haphazardly, uh, people have come and donated materials that have been gathered and we have found treasures, real treasures. One thing we found is correspondence, correspondence from Paris to Germany, from uh, families who have uh, tried to get out of Europe during the 30s and early, early 40s. We've found, uh, we also have materials that are newspaper articles, newspapers themselves, um, original pieces, um, something, Father Cochran's, um, anti-Semitic newspaper and other materials that are uh, original materials that have been donated correspondence as well and so we have boxes of and you can see memoirs as well as original materials in these boxes which we have uh, listed and will now be uh, cataloged and will be available um, for as part of the Gratz library 
thank you. We appreciate that. Um, so I'm curious also, is, so what is the process with these as they become part of the Gratz Library? Um, I understand uh, that they are being digitized. Is that right? So do you, mm -hmm. could anyone tell me more about that process and where we are in it? Is we are in, uh, in the process of digitizing the material so that it will be on a special website um, through the college and that is being created as we speak and hopefully will be up this fall. Uh, there will be access to the interviews, the sound of the interviews, and also the transcripts which we have audited that have reached their complete status uh, so that people will be able to go to see if we have a certain interviewer or I'm sorry a certain interviewee that they might be interested in but also certain topics they will be able to do searches by experience by place names and see what information we have to be able to use this information for research, for teaching. Um, and we are thrilled that we're at this point. It's yeah. a dream. It is. It is. Yes. Thank you for that. And I believe we have at least one more thing we want to take a look at. Um, I teased some of you that there was a Whitman's chocolate box here at the live. And we're going to take a look at this for a moment. So here we have what looks like a chocolate box with Whitman's candies in it, but that's not what it is. No. So let's talk about what it really is. The surprise in it is a two stereopticon viewers, which are in excellent condition, and a full set of, let's see. Can you tell of me? pictures. <laughs> which can be put into the stereopticon to be viewed. The most interesting part of this is that the full set of these pictures were taken by Hitler's personal photographer. They are available uh, for, uh, if you go to the Brooklyn, the Stereopticon Institute of Brooklyn, you can, uh, access information about these. They were taken through the era of the Second World War. They went through several cities and they were actually Hitler's PR to the public. Wow. So they're early in this, the area, <laughs> excuse me, in the history of the Second World War. And they are now being It'll be online and it'll be part of our digitized collection and be able to see all of this fascinating information. That is amazing. Our viewers don't know your name. Can you tell Anne us a little Kirk bit? Is my name. I have been only, what, 10 years, uh, maybe? <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I'm the newbie. The newbie, yeah. 10 years. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm very gratifying to be part of this effort. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and Gratz is really very appreciative of everyone who works here, all of the work the volunteers do. This is really an incredible, incredible program. And, and you have been working for so long, for so many years doing this. It is so appreciated. We should do more of these, absolutely. Is there anything else that anyone would like to add while I'm here? I just want to mention the work I do. Okay, please, let's do that. Several other volunteers and I write summaries of the transcripts. And these summaries accompany the transcript and the tape, uh, which we share with two major collections, the United States uh, Holocaust Memorial Museum in Washington and Yad Vashem in Jerusalem. And then, of course, they go out online, they're posted online, and it means that scholars and serious students uh, have access to it. And they can write to us, they can come in, or they can write to us requesting uh, uh, either the whole tape or we usually send a portion based on their particular interest. Thank you, thank you.
Yes, it's a blessing what you all are doing in here. And I believe we have just one more final comment. We'll come over here to Dr. To Josie Fisher again. I just want to make sure that we mention uh, two folks uh, who are not here today. Uh, Natalie Packle, who started working with us in 1986, and along with Jerry uh, and myself, were, was also very involved in interviewing and now working on transcripts and summaries. And Harry Zimmerman, uh, who could not be with us today. And I want to make sure their names were included. Thank They're you. Here in spirit. Thank you. Absolutely. Yes. You'll check this out when you go to YouTube to look at this, to look at this uh, live stream later. Please feel free to comment on this video and put the names of everyone who works here, all the names of all the volunteers in the comments. So everyone will see it. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. I appreciate this time that you spent with us for this live stream. And uh, we'll, we'll uh, catch up later with you. Take care, everyone. Thank you, Laurie. Take care. So we are now heading out of the Holocaust Oral History Archive at Graz, and we are going to make our way downstairs to the, some of the administrative offices at Graz. If you uh, are like what you're, if you like what you're seeing, and you would like to help support Graz, we are doing a double your donation fundraiser right now, in which any amount that you donate will be doubled today and tomorrow, up until the end of the day tomorrow, August 31st. So we hope that you will go to charity.com backslash grats to help, to help secure our fundraising efforts for $120,000. That is our goal. So I'm going to take you now down the hallway into the college wing of the building and we are going to sit down we're going to see who we can find to interrupt who whose work we can interrupt the best i think perhaps we'll check in to see if hope matlis is here hope matlis are you here today i am i am hello everybody say hello real loudly so everyone can hear you hello everyone how are you it's good to see you hope can you tell us something can you tell us about how about how long have you worked for Gratz? I've been at Gratz 22 years in June, and I've worked in two different offices for four different people. And I tell everybody that I do everything that nobody else does when they ask what my job is. Oh, okay. You do all the things that nobody else wants to do. Is that Either what you're saying? to do or, or can do. But you've been at Gratz for a long time, and I've noticed that when, um, when students of ours talk about stories about teachers that they've had that they like, your name keeps, keeps coming up. You may not have been one of their teachers, but your name comes up a lot. So what about that? Why does that happen? Well, when we had on-campus students, they were in my office quite often to use the copier or pick up papers or sometimes they just came in event or chit chat and they needed somebody to talk to um, for whatever reason so that was fun um, and you know you just get used to people being around so they it's a hello every day and you know what are you, what are you up to and talk about the family and the pets and whatever it was they wanted to discuss it's a little more difficult online because now we're just emailing back and forth. And every once in a while, I'll make a phone call and say, oh, it's good to hear your voice, things like that. But um, I, always, I always felt like helping the students out was part of my purpose here, not just to get you know my personal work done, but um, just being here for the students and knowing what their needs are and being able to help them is, is a big part of the job. It sounds like you love it, too. I do. I don't think you can stay anywhere for 22 years and, <laughs> and not be happy. No, exactly, exactly. Well, so. we appreciate all that you do here at Gratz. We're going to take off and not to keep you from your work today. All right. Well, but thank you. You bet. Good you luck, bet. everybody. It was good to see you. Thanks. Bye. Okay. We're heading out. We're heading this way. And I think at this point, we are going to go look for our Director of Institutional Advancement, Naomi Hausman. So we're heading back to her office. And in the meantime, you get an idea of what it looks like at Gratz right now. As you can tell, it is a little bit quiet here. But 
we are heading back to see what Naomi Hausman can tell us. So we are now in the administrative wing. This is our photocopier and our fax machine, which no one uses, photocopier. We're walking down the hallway, our old filing cabinets. We're seeing Mindy Cohen as we walk by. We're gonna check in with you soon, Mindy. And we're going all the way back here. We are heading to the office of the Director of Institutional Advancement, Naomi Hausman. Why, hello, Lori Cohen. Hello. You didn't know I was coming, did you? It's a complete and total surprise. <laughs> but nonetheless, wonderful to see you. It's good to see Everybody. you, too. We have kind of a special day today. Can you tell our viewers what we're trying to do here? What's going on? Okay, what is going on is a lot of excitement, a lot of fun, and uh, a lot of optimism because today is the day that Gratz College is launching its first ever crowdfunding campaign. Um, we are trying something new because we want to reach a broad, as broadly as possible to our community. We want to touch as many people as possible and engage them in Gratz whether they are attended grads a long, long time ago or they're new to grads, we want as many people as possible to know that this is a great place and that they can support it. And um, we have so many alum out there that um, you know are out there doing great things in the world and we wanna give them an opportunity to show their love for grads and support us. What, and what is your fundraising goal for today? So fundraising goal, uh, so yes, the, the, the what, why, where, when is important. Uh, the fundraising goal is $120,000. Uh, so we are, it's a 48 hour campaign. We launched at 10 a.m. this morning. So today's Tuesday. We are going until Wednesday night, August 31st. And um, we uh, have, it's a matching campaign. So that means that every dollar you give, even if you, you can only give whatever you can give, smart, small or large, it's uh, every gift will be matched two times. So we have raised um, uh, $60,000 from our matching donors. So if you give eighteen dollars today, you get thirty. You you're really giving thirty six dollars to Gratz. So every that doubling effect is really powerful for us. So and we haven't done this in a while, have we? <clears throat> we haven't done matching. the matching gifts in a, in a while. Well, have uh, we? Yes, I mean this is our first crowdfunding campaign. So the match is right. It's uh, we're doing this. Uh, the, I think the big difference now is that we. We're, we haven't done it in a while, but that we're doing this very much in the digital space with our, our YouTube channel, um, with our directed emails. Um, we're online on social media, and so we're really trying to get the word out there. Here's the hard question. Oh, oh boy. Here's the hard one for you. So put your thinking cap on. So I'll put my glasses on. The theme of this camp. Yes. The th yes. <laughs> the theme of this campaign is timeliness is timely. Okay. Okay. Tell us about that. Why is Gratz relevant now? Okay, that is a great question. So, our theme about timeliness is about Gratz because we're such a unique place, and we've been around. This is our 127th year. And we know that the education that we're offering is still relevant today, just as it was 127 years ago. Um, so we're timeless in the sense that the education that we're providing is relevant. We're addressing uh, you know, all the things in the world that we want young people and young and old people to go out there in the world and help to address. Anti-Semitism and um, uh, prejudice, hate, you know, all these things that are roiling our world and unfortunately are still alive and present in the world. Um, we want to prepare our teachers, our uh, policymakers, our you know nonprofit organization leaders wh in whatever sector our our students are working in. We want them to be prepared to make the world a better place. So, going back to our roots of as a Jewish institution um, with the mission around Tikkun Olam and repairing the world, we're still doing that today. And um, we have new students all the time who come to us saying that we they were drawn to Gratz because they know this is a place that um, educates with meaning and purpose. So, uh, and so that's our timelessness. We're relevant and evergreen uh, and uh, timely because uh, for us, this is the end of our fiscal year, August 31st. Um, and so we need to raise annual fund uh, uh, funds for, to support the general operating of the college and everything that we do here. And also timely because it is um, timed near commencement. So yes, two days ago, we had our, our 122nd annual commencement. Is that, is that right, 122? Yes. Yes. Yes, 122. Um, and so we had uh, almost a little over 100 graduates 
uh, a very diverse group of people from all over the world really um, getting their degrees at Gratz. And so um, we're celebrating our graduates and celebrating another year of commencement and success at Gratz. So for all those reasons, <laughs> it's not a short answer, <laughs> but it is an answer about how we chose this interesting theme of timeliness is timeless. Hard to say, but very meaningful to us. Thank you. Thank right. you so much. We're going to we're going to head on out and talk to some more folks and we appreciate your time. Thanks, and we got to get back to work and get back on yes. those phones, right? <laughs> Keep oh, making yes. calls. Ring ring. Ring ring. <laughs> ring us everyone. Bye, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. And how can you make a do donation by going to charity.com backslash grats. So let's see who else is in the building right now. I see that one of the doors is closed. We won't be going over there. So we're going to check into our boardroom next, which is our Mission Central at Gratz. And here we have our tiny little kitchen, with our refrigerator, and our sink. And we're walking into the boardroom, and nobody is here right now. But this gives me a wonderful opportunity to show you one thing. I um, just want to point out to you that inside of our boardroom is a little bit of history. We have up on this wall the original indenture of Gratz College. We have our founder, Hyman Gratz, over here, right there. We have his muse, as we like to call her, Rebecca Gratz, whom most of you know. And over here, we have the indenture. So this is hanging up permanently inside of our boardroom. So we do have a bit of history here. So it looks like some of my folks that I'm looking for are running away from me. So I'm gonna see if I can find some more folks to interview while you're hanging on. So as I promised, this is kind of a rough live stream. Be seeing all kinds of things such as leftovers from our lunch today. I'm gonna to head back over here. I do wanna see if Mindy Cohen is available. Let's see if she's, a oh, look at this. Knock, yeah. knock. Knock, knock, Mindy Cohen. Hello. Hello, and how are you today? Hi. I am looking at all the donations that have been coming in today, which is amazing. Look at this, Mindy. Okay, so we're going to see your screen here. Everyone, take a look. This is the charity.com backslash Gratz website right here. You and it's super easy to donate. You just push the red button. Push the red button, and it goes right through. You can make your, your donation right there. It's and all you'll you see that if you make that $18 donation. What does it do when you make the 18 Oh, look at that. It goes right to $36 because... Today and tomorrow, you can double your donation. Mindy, can you tell us something about your family? You, you have been, you've done a trip to Israel with Gratz. 1982, shout out to 1982 Gratz Israel Opan trip. You, we just actually had our 40th anniversary, which is kind of scary. <laughs> um, but besides that, um, I mean, I am actually not a Gratz High School alumni. I'm sorry, I just did the trip. However, all three of my daughters are graduates of JCHS, Gratz Academy. My husband is a graduate of Gratz Hebrew High School. My sister-in-law and my mother-in-law both have degrees from Gratz College, so we are a three generation. Uh, my sister also has a, a degree from Gratz College. My older daughters who have degrees have used their Hebrew School teaching certificate to make money while in college. They've gotten dual enrollment which has made their regular college career much cheaper because they had grads credits, which is amazing. So please support us. Keep me busy. And uh, we love doing that. So yep. keep making those donations. Keep Mindy busy. Keep Mindy busy. We're changing, we're changing the theme of this to keep Mindy busy. Right. And just keep an eye out. Hopefully we're going to get some more programs in person in the building because I miss seeing all my grads friends. Absolutely. Okay. And Take we care. miss seeing all of you. Yes. So we're going to head on. Bye, Mindy. We will catch you later. And we're still looking for a couple more folks that I'm hoping to see in the building. So stick with me, everyone. Let's see if we can find them. Look at this, look at this. I'm starting to see Dodie is back at her desk. And we're hoping, we're hoping that she is going to give us just a couple minutes of her time. Hey, hey look, here's Dodie. Mask, here's Dodie. <laughs> Dodie, how you? are you? I'm good, good to see you. So Dodie, we're making our rounds. Yes. Um, you have been with Bratz for a little while. How long? 16 years. 16? Yes. Wow. Yes. How Just about that? Just a youngin here at Gratz, actually. <laughs> and, you've, and you've had different roles at Gratz, is that right? Yes. So, so I was originally hired as a part-time employee working with the Adult Jewish Learning Program. 
And we had a, a grant and I was helping with a grant. Then I moved into admissions and grant management for Legacy Heritage. And then I moved into development and <laughs> worked in development for a while. And then eventually worked my way down the building into the president's office. So here I am as the assistant to the president. Fabulous. So, yeah. What's been your most fun role here at Gratz? What, do you, what have you enjoyed the most? Uh, uh, I enjoyed admissions because I loved going out and meeting people. I love traveling and meeting all these young people that were in this like transition phase in their lives and making the decision to expand their education and go to the next step. And that was a wonderful moment to be in someone's life. And that was, that was pretty exciting. I love that. And yes. to help them through that process. Very satisfying. Yeah. Now, is. many of those students you helped through that process are now alumni. Correct. And tell us about your role and what you're doing with alumni now. <laughs> so now I am the alumni coordinator. So I reach out to alumni um, via email. I run the alumni Facebook page and the alumni LinkedIn page. So please look us up on there. And we just created this beautiful book. <gasps> that is beautiful. Yes. So this is a, a year and a half long project where we worked with a company called PCI that created a book of s stories of all of our alumni, everybody who participated. And uh, so they interviewed alumni over the phone and then transcribed the stories and put, them, put the stories into this beautiful book. And we're really very excited about this. If you are interested in getting a copy of this book, you can make a donation of $500 for a copy of this book or get the digital version for $250. So uh, let me know at giving a grad study to you if you're interested in purchase, not purchasing, but giving a donation and getting this book as a gift. Lovely. And I assume we'll be having an alumni reunion coming up soon? There is an alumni reunion scheduled for September 11th. How about that? Yes, Sunday, September 11th, coming up in just a couple weeks. And everybody, any type of alum is invited. If you went to Israel, if you were in the high school, if you're in the college, if you were online, if you were on campus, come to the reunion. We'll be there. <laughs> yes. We'll feed you. We'll feed you. You'll, we'll be there. We're going to have some fun. And yeah. we're going and we're going to have these books to take a look at for yeah. everyone to see and read. And it's going to be a lot of fun on that day. Yeah. It All will right. be. Okay. Good to see you, Lori. Yeah. Yay. Good to see you. Thank you for your time. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. Okay. So we are heading out. We're going to, we're, we are in search of at least one more Gratz person that many people at Gratz remember. And here we are going down these hallways again. And if we can find him, we'll, we will be looking for Ernie Collins. We will be looking for him. So let's see if we can find him. I don't know if we will, but we're trying. Let's look around. He's not here. Ernie, where are you? We're calling for Ernie. I haven't seen him yet. I haven't seen Ernie yet, and if anybody knows where he is, we would love to have him. He knows he knows that he's supposed to be here for one of these. So we're gonna ask we're gonna ask Hope. Hope, have you seen Ernie? In his office. Shall we in go shall we go do video of Ernie's office? Sure, why not? This is gonna be fun. Let's do let's go see if we can find Ernie and in his office. Okay. He's probably having lunch. Let's bother him. This right here is Ernie's office. Electric room. Let's knock. Let's see if he comes out. As we wait at Ernie's office. Hello, and how are you? <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's going on? Look at the surprise on his face. I said I was going to come find you, and now I found you. Okay, you found me. Yes, we did. And how have you been? I'm doing fine. All right, good to hear it. So, we just wanted to get a quick moment from your from your day, just to ask you about your experience with Gratz. How many how many years have you been with Gratz? Forty-two. How many? 42. Did you say 42? Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. 
And uh, over that time, I assume you've you know a few stories of things that may have happened. <laughs> yeah, well, forty actually it was forty three. Forty three. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now you started. What building did you start in? Uh, tenth and Tabor. Tenth and Tabor. I bet we have a lot of folks who remember Tenth and Tabor. That's no, for sure. Not very many. Not too many. No. Only um, I think it's maybe only Doctor Wax and uh, that's it. I think. Oh, Ruth. Ruth. Ruth Sandberg. She would remember yeah. it as well. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. What would you say? Do you have any like favorite memories or interesting stories about your time? <laughs> There's a lot of them. There's a lot of them. Uh, uh. What would you say? How about let's start with your? Well, how about let's start with uh, the person that you met at Gratz. The first what? The person that you met at Gratz. Which one? <laughs> I mean, Which one? The one that you now call your wife. Oh, well, that was so. Uh, we met in, I think it was either 89 or 90. Okay. I think it was one of those years. And uh, we had the cafeteria, and she was in charge of the cafeteria. That's uh, Lavissa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Lavissa for, uh, I don't know, maybe two, uh, until 91, 92, something like that. And she left, and uh, I didn't see her anymore until uh, 1999. Oh, so, so you <laughs> met, but you didn't get together yet? No, not yet. Oh. Yeah, so we, we, met, we met again in 1999. 98, 98. In 98. And by that time, were we in this building uh, oh, yeah. in, in Melrose yeah. Park, right? Yeah. We, were, we were here, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, she came back, I think she came back in 2007 to work here. So can we can, can we add your story to the, the, the matches that Gratz, Gratz has made over the years, the love matches? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, well, yeah, sure. Uh, how many others do you have? Um, I don't know if we have a count on it, but you know, in the past, we have had folks calling to the front desk and asking if we knew anybody for them. They wanted to know whether or not Gratz had a dating service. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we had a lot of people dating, but not a dating service. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So you probably know this building inside and out, is that right? Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah, yeah, I would say so also. So you look very handsome here in your Gratz t-shirt, your Gratz gear, as many of us are wearing today. And do you have anything else you'd like to add to tell our viewers at home? Um, no, no. I mean, you know, uh, some of the things that uh, we used to have we don't have anymore i wish you know i would like to you know i would like for them to have continued uh you know such as the high school and um oh you know just the classes that you you know we had a lot of classes it was fun those days at 10th and Tabor were a lot of fun well, right yeah, those days at 10th and Tabor and the earlier years here it was nice. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I agree. I completely agree. Yeah. And thank you for your time today. Okay. I appreciate and, uh, that. Yeah. Well, if you had time, I could tell you a lot of, you know. Uh, a lot more stories. Yeah. Well, we do have the time, but. <laughs> no. <laughs> <Don't care. laughs> Not anyway, that, 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 that's some of it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, maybe we'll check in again another time. Yeah. 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 All right, well, thank you so much today. All thank right. you, Ernie. Okay. All right, we are going to now head out back to the lobby. I was hoping I was hoping to get a few words from our president, but it seems that he has been in meetings all day. So we'll see if that's still the case. Got my walking shoes on. So yes, I'm going back into the administrative wing here and we'll see whether or not we can get a few words from him.
as we go through here. We'll check to see, and it looks like, ah, oh, the door is still closed. So I guess we won't have any words from our president today, but we can always try again tomorrow. So thank you so much, Lori? everyone. Hey, Lori. Yes. I'm just, I'm photo I'm bombing you. Uh-oh, wait, 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 here's Naomi. We're photo bombing <laughs> together. Photo -bombing. I don't know if it's photo bombing or video bombing, but I just wanted to say, if your phone is ringing today, it might be one of us calling you, so pick it up. That's right. Okay. Absolutely, pick up your phone today. Yes. That's what we're doing. <laughs> Double your dollars today, and just today and tomorrow. So either today you'll be hearing from us or tomorrow. And thank you so much for watching our stream today. And thank you, Lori. You're awesome. This is fun. You bet. We work with the best people. Yes, we do. <laughs> Take care, everyone.